This isn't right. The Amalja would never leave this place so poorly guarded. Not willingly, no. <laughs> ah, the saviors of Eorzea. Slow as ever. By the twelve. Will you never learn? You know, you're right. Mayhap it is time for a change of tack. Killing primals, tormenting beastmen, hastening the birth of a new god. It's all a bit much, isn't it? And frankly, we don't have the leisure to do it. But killing the warrior of light, on the other hand, that would soon plunge Eorzea into chaos. One life for one world. A fair exchange! Wouldn't you agree? Lest you forget, you've more than one opponent. I sense you will offer more than mere target practice, unlike your sister. Alize! Did... Did I not tell you, Alphano? I am not the girl I once was. My brother was always the clever one, while my talents lay elsewhere. dare to stand against us, to destroy all that we hold dear, then you shall die by my sword! Let's finish this.
It ends. Now. What? The chains! God, you snake! You would betray us as well? He that holdeth fast unto his convictions shall never count betrayal amongst his crimes, though all the world may call him villain. My path is unchanged, my creed sacrosanct. This I believe with all my heart. But say, warrior of darkness, and speak true, what dost thou believe? That rendering up the souls of thy world in service to the rejoining will grant it salvation? Nay. By the Twelve! Oriange! Mine apologies, Master Alfino. That the brightest light might shine, duty did compel me to walk in darkest shade. You sweet fool. I was almost willing to believe you had turned against us. I expect a full explanation when this is over. For now, may I assume you have turned your cloak for the last time? Thou mayest, my lady. By thy leave. Even odds, then. No matter. We'll crush the lot of you in one fell swoop! Understood. Hearken to me. We only have one chance. Channel your ether into my blade that I might strike before the mage casts his spell. I cannot do it alone, but together, together we can defeat them!
Alize, are you hurt? A touch dizzy, but otherwise fine. Thank you. And there you have it. Our friend is too stubborn to die. <sighs> we are far from finished. Or have you never considered how we came to this world? Crystals? You mean... like the Assians? Just so. As the Assians flee under the rift twixt plains with crystals of darkness, so did these warriors come hither with crystals of light. Eloquent, as always. I, like the Assians, we too are beyond death. You cannot defeat that which is eternal. <laughs> Wait! Such methods as the Assians employ require the renunciation of the flesh. You... you would have had to... At long last, you see. To save our world, we gave our lives. We were just adventurers trying to make our way. And our job here, a favor there, we never aspired to be warriors of light. But word of our deeds spread, and soon people were calling us heroes. They placed their hopes and dreams on our shoulders, and bid us fight for all that was good and right. We fought, and we fought, and we fought until there was no one left to fight. We won! And now our world is being erased from existence. We did everything right! Everything that was asked of us, and still, still it came to this! You of all people should understand. We cannot, we will not falter. We brought our world to the brink of destruction, and now we must save it. <clears throat> I've died before, Arbut. I'm not afraid to die again. No matter how many times we fall, we must rise and carry on the fight for those we left behind.
to have known the depths of sorrow and embrace the highest sacrifice. Nonetheless, Master Louis Soir, guide my hand, I pray you, as fate's thread spinneth upon this most capricious spindle. Quickly! Thou must needs invoke the power of thy crystal! What is this place? Such pain. Such sorrow. Oh, my dear children. It can't be. Mother Heidelin, hearken unto your children's plea. From two worlds do we gather, and from two worlds do we offer a bounty of light. In this desperate hour we do beseech your intercession. We beg an audience with the word of the mother, with your chosen Minfilia. Your cries go not unheard nor your sacrifices unnoticed. Though many are lost, there are those we can yet save, whom I can yet save. Minfilia! Blessed children of the first, the light of your world hath grown blinding in its radiance, but it is not yet absolute. I will hie me to your world, and there take unto myself the light which riseth even now to drown it, as darkness once did drown another. Now you deign to answer our prayers? I will suffer this farce no longer! As the Asians must serve as instruments of Zodiac's will, so too must others carry out the will of Hydaelyn. But for the boon you have granted her, she has grown strong enough to set me free, that I might serve as her emissary. Your suffering, your sacrifice, your supplications, she has heard all. We will not let the first fall to light. Thank you, Uriange, for bringing everyone here. It fills my heart with joy to look upon the faces of my friends once more. In taking you unto her bosom, I knew that Heidelin had bequeathed to you a sliver of her grace, granting you strength long sought. And in treating with the Asians, I learnt of a star like unto our own, 
a doomed world of fallen heroes in whom I glimpsed ourselves, the first. Full long did I search for a means to save this world, concluding at the last that the answer lay in the power of blessed crystals. And thus did I labor to set light against dark. Yet I knew from the beginning that this salvation would not come without sacrifice. For the instrument of the first's deliverance would of necessity be required to journey thither, there to remain, mayhap forever. You orchestrated all of this, not to save her, but to send her away! One life for one world. Such was the bargain, and you the coin, though it were not mine to spend. Have we not walked together in the light of the crystal, and at her bidding borne witness to the joys and sorrows of this land? Each and every one of you knows my heart. If this be the price I must pay, I pay it gladly. You would go alone then? My dearest Thancred, you who have ever watched over me, I am truly grateful for all you have done on my behalf, as would my father be. Your kindness, your compassion, your love. These are your gifts to me, and our gifts to them, forming a bond which transcends time and space. Sometimes I forget you are not the child I once knew. Make me proud. Long have I watched you from Hydaelyn's side, watched as you nurtured and kept safe the light of the dawn. The dark recesses of the world hide untold secrets and dangers. Thus do I entrust to you, Tubsumati. I pray you, keep to the path that you may never have need of it. is all but spent. Perhaps, if there is naught else to be done, Hear me, servant of Hydaelyn. If you would have us place our trust in you, then I would ask a favor. Take us with you. Take us home. We were blind to the truth once, so I tell you this, as one fool to another. Light, dark, it doesn't matter. What matters is how you choose to use them. We made our choice and you see what came of it, so please, forge a different path. Seize a better fate. To 
is a strange feeling. So many times have I watched you depart, my heart filled with worry. And ever did you return to me in triumph. Someday, when I have found a way to free this star from her sorrow, I promise you I shall repay the favor.